About a year ago, my sister got married and I got to be the maid of honor. When she asked me to be her maid of honor, she specifically said, if you do this for me, I know this is gonna get planned. Of course, I was thrilled to do this for her, but what I failed to take into consideration is just how much work an event like this takes to plan. Of course, all events, all parties, all productions take a lot of work, and the work isn't always done by the star of the show. The women's suffrage movement was an extravagant production, but it often fails to recognize the work that was done by marginalized people. I'm Sam Orth. Today I'm going to talk about some of the known women of the suffrage movement, some of the treatment of women of color, and why I believe that we need to celebrate it anyway. The women's suffrage movement was a movement of many approaches, but when we think of it, we normally associate it with a select few women. Susan B. Anthony loved to challenge the social norms of the time, doing unconventional and unwomanlike things, like registering to vote. Carrie Chapman Catt worked within the system, even talking to then President Woodrow Wilson on many occasions. Alice Paul was a bit more of an extremist and she was arrested several times as a result. Of course, this doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of the work that was done by these women or other women for that matter, yet these three women are the main ones that we hear about. For many women, thousands of women, the suffrage movement was a full-time job. Of course, not all that work was done on stage. There were several women doing work that was not in the headlines and that was behind the scenes. And a lot of these women were women of color. Worse still, these women were sometimes actively forced out of the spotlight. Ida B. Wells wanted to march with white women in a parade that was organized by Alice Paul, but she was pushed to the back. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper actively spoke out against the treatment of women of color in the suffrage movement, but she chose to support it anyway because she believed that supporting the women's movement would ultimately benefit women of color in the future. Why don't we hear about them as frequently as we do the first three women that I mentioned? Despite this unfairness throughout the movement and for far too long after, I think the movement deserves a lot of praise and celebration. The work that these women did for something they believe in should not be overlooked and frankly can't be overstated. They got what they were fighting for. They got their amendment. This movement also opened the door for subsequent groups of people to start their own productions and to start their own movements. These are marginalized groups of people that are no longer being held backstage and out of the spotlight. Change requires a lot of work. The women's suffrage movement was a huge change and therefore required a huge amount of work, a lot of which isn't fully recognized even today. Today I talked about some of the prominent figures, all white women, the treatment of some women of color within the movement, and why I think that we need to celebrate it regardless. This movement was a tidal wave and it laid the foundation for future groups of people to fight for the rights that they deserve as humans and as American citizens. This change is still influential and still necessary today. If you're gonna take anything from this talk, any work that you can do for positive change is worth doing. But everybody deserves, if they want it, a chance at center stage. Thank you.